Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. This is Huma. Today I will be making kabuli pilau with mutton. Um, in a previous video, I have shared a recipe of kabuli pilau with you guys, but in that video, I have clearly mentioned that it is a very basic recipe of kabuli pilau and it has no meat in it, even though I also mentioned that in future, I will share a recipe of kabuli pilau with meat in it. Now, so some viewers, they didn't like it or um, they objected. They said, um, kabuli pilau cannot be made, uh, made without the meat. Well, um, um, I have about 50 household of Afghani friends here in the United States where we meet pretty much at least every two months and every time they have dinner party at their house they make kabul pilau without the meat. Well there's a reason when a lot of um, people or my Afghani friend they make kabul pilau without the meat because they make a lot of other food items uh, such as uh, chicken uh, kurma, kofta chalao, sikh kebab, chapli kebab, which they are, I mean, loaded with meat items. So they want to keep their rice without the meat. But yes, authentic original recipe of kabul pilau is with meat. So today I am sharing that recipe with you guys. And um, as I said, authentic kabuli pilau um, contains lamb meat because Afghani people, they usually use lamb meat in most of their uh, food but uh, it's totally your choice I am using goat meat and uh, you can also make it with beef or chicken make sure that the meat you're using it has bones and some fat in it so over here I have about a pound and a half of goat meat and I have about 10 ounce package of julienne cut carrots um, you can use one and a half bag if you like more carrots and raisins on top of your rice but i'm using only one bag or maybe a bag and a half some salt some green cardamoms um, a little bit of garlic paste some garam masala powder or which is also known as whole spice powder a cup of red raisins one large onion chopped some oil and over here i have about three and a half cups of Sailor rice, which I have pre-soaked for about an hour. Uh, yes, you do need to soak this rice ahead of cooking for about an hour or 45 minutes. Now, do not use basmati rice or any other rice to make gobble pop because um, the way it is going to be cooked, if you're going to use basmati rice, the chances are that your rice will become a mush or maybe it will break apart. So, uh, please do use sela parboiled or it is also known as polished rice. Uh, okay, we're going to start our cooking process. Okay, over here I am going to use about three quarters of uh, a cup oil. And we're going to brown these sliced onions okay we're going to fry it until it becomes nice beautiful golden brown color okay it is becoming a uh, golden brown color i'm going to keep frying for maybe another one minute or so make sure again i am insisting that please do not make it dark dark uh, brown otherwise it's going to turn your rice taste bitter if i'm going to fry for another one minute it's gonna burn for sure okay then i'm going to add a little bit of water before adding the meat otherwise the meat is going to stick to the bottom Now add your meat. About one teaspoon of salt. Now make sure you're not adding a lot of salt at this stage. Maybe half teaspoon or one teaspoon is good enough. Because we're going to add salt and the rice when we are going to boil it. So you do not you don't want to make it very salty. Add garlic paste, green cardamom, 
and garam masala powder I'm going to fry to cook this uh, blend of onion oil um, and spices for about one to two minutes and then I'm going to add water okay now I'm going to add about three cups to three and a half cups of water And I'm going to use this pressure cooker to cook the meat. I'm going to cook the meat in the pressure cooker for about 25 minutes or so. If you are not using pressure cooker and you're just going to uh, cook your meat in a pot, it's going to take probably an hour, a little bit more than an hour until the meat is fully cooked. Okay, um, it's been 20 minutes already. I'm going to turn off the stove. I'm going to check on the meat. Okay, let's check on our meat. It should be fully cooked. Yes, it's fully cooked. And what I'm going to do I'm going to take out the um, meat. I separated the meat from the stock and I'm going to uh, put it aside and I am going to use the stock to pour over rice and you'll see what we are going to do next step. Okay, over here in the frying pan I am going to add about um, less than half a cup of oil, probably one quarter of a cup oil and I'm going to add these julienne cut carrots on top and I'm going to fry it until um, it change its color from this orange color to slightly dark orange color you will see it's going to become a little bit darker in color after frying it for five to six minutes on high flame. Now a lot of people they add a little bit of uh, sugar or um, green cardamom powder on my carrots but I don't use anything. Okay as you can see that a few strings of carrot has become uh, light brown. Now I'm going to add a cup of red raisins. If you want um, extra sweetness in your uh, rice, you can add a cup and a half. I'm using only one cup. Okay, I'm going to fry the raisins along carrot for a minute or two until you I uh, can see that the raisins has become slightly puffed up. Um, you can um, add some uh, silvered almonds or pistachio uh, at this stage, but I'm not using any nuts. Okay, I'm going to turn off the stove. Okay, now I'm going to make a little pocket out of this aluminum foil. I'm going to add everything in this aluminum foil like so. Let's see. Close the edges, make it like a pocket like so. And if you do not have aluminum foil in your pantry, I'm sure everybody does, you can put this um, carrot, fried carrots in a little bowl on the side, and then I'll tell you what to do with that next. Okay, now I'm going to add these uh, pre-soaked 
rice in the hot boiling water. I have uh, strained the excess water out of it and carefully add your pre-soaked rice in your pot. Make sure your water is at the boiling temperature when you're adding your rice. Okay, now I'm going to add about three to four teaspoons of salt. Well, I said three to four teaspoons, don't worry, we're going to throw away the water so it won't be that salty. I'm going to cook this rice um, about 75%, not halfway, not all the way cooked, but 75% cooked. Because we're also going to leave it on simmer, so make sure do not overcook the rice. Okay, I always tell you guys when I make any or when I share any rice recipe that whenever you guys are cooking rice, make sure that you're using white mouth pot and make sure that it's big enough that uh, you're cooking your rice because when the rice is about to cook or it's cooking, it expands. And if it doesn't have enough space, what's going to happen, it's going to become very sticky and it's going to become to a mush. So make sure you're using big and white mouth pot. My rice is about 75% cooked and I'm going to strain the water out of it. I'm adding the rice back in the pot. Okay, now I'm going to add the stock uh, from the meat all over the rice. I'm going to mix it in the rice. Make sure when you're mixing it, you have to be very gentle because you do not want to break the rice. Very light handed. And now I'm going to add this three pieces in one corner of the pot. Okay, I'm trying to cover it a little bit with rice because if you leave it just like that, um, as we're going to simmer the rice, the meat is going to become very dry. So I'm trying to cover it with a little bit of the rice so it won't become dry. Okay, good enough. Okay, on the other side, I am going to add this pocket now. Um, you don't have to make this pocket exactly. I just want to do it because uh, when I'm ready to dish it out, it's just easy to put it aside, dish out your rice, and then spread the carrots over. You can just leave your carrot on the side if you don't want to add in the pocket like that, or if you do not have aluminum foil, just leave it a little bowl on this side. So I'm going to tuck it in the corner. Okay, with the bottom of any spoon, a long thin object, I'm going to poke hole in the surface of rice so the heat um, should be able to reach the top layer of rice while we are going to simmer it. Okay, um, to simmer the rice, um, before putting my um, pot on top of the stove, I'm going to use something like this underneath the pot. Uh, so it, it will prevent uh, the rice to become burned or uh, brown from the bottom of the pot. And turn your heat to the lowest possible. Okay, before placing the lid on top of my pot, I have placed a kitchen towel underneath so it can trap the moisture to drip back on top of the rice or make it soggy. I'm going to let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes on the lowest heat. Okay, um, our rice is done. I'm going to dish it out. I'm going to set this pocket on a side. 
I'm going to add the rice first and then I'm going to place the meat on top and then I'm going to sprinkle the carrots. Okay, now I'm going to place the meat pieces on top. Okay, now I'm going to spread the carrots and fried raisins on top of the rice. I'll fix it with the spoon. Just like so. Okay, that's it. It looks good and it's ready. Alright, our mutton kabuli pilau is ready. Usually it is served along um, kufta chalo or chapli kebab, green chutney, uh, banjan burani and um, I have already shared the recipe of banjan burani on my channel. You can find it. And I will also share some more of kind of recipe with you guys in um, coming days. Please give me a feedback and uh, do not forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram, Kukwetuna and you can also find me on Google+. You can also like my page on Facebook. You guys take care. I'll see you guys next time.